Matthew chapter number 7, we're going to start reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for the reading of your word. Lord, we're thankful for these folks that have come out here on this Wednesday night. Lord, we're thankful for our church, Lord, and everything it means to us. Lord, we're just thankful to have a place to come here in the middle of the week. Lord, we ask you just be with what you've laid upon my heart. Lord, help me convey it to your people here tonight. Lord, if there's anybody here that's lost, Lord, help them see their need for salvation. Lord, help each and every one of us be able to walk out of here tonight closer to you than we was when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> the first thing we'll look at by way of introduction is we see this commonly used phrase, so to speak, uh, in verse number one. This commonly used verse, uh, judge not that you be not judged. How many times or how many of us, of us have ever heard, you can't judge me. The Bible tells you not to judge me. Well, the Bible might tell me not to judge you, uh, but I can still look at some of the things that you do and know that they're just wrong. Um, they're not biblical, or they're just they're, they're unmoral, or they're just illegal, or whatever it may be. Uh, but we have a society that always wants to point to this verse uh, and claim that we're not to judge them. Uh, you know, I, I had a conversation... Uh, uh, a group text a few weeks ago and the comment was made in there uh, about not judging people and, and somebody said back, like, well, no, but we can't have a righteous judgment to know when things ain't right, they're not right. Uh, Brother Ron, that pretty much sums it up. And the thing about it is, in some of those cases, those people know uh, when they're not right. And so we're not looking to judge people, but we can judge certain things that they do and know what we need to stay away from, so to speak. Uh, why do we not want to judge? Why, why do they think we don't want to judge? Because they don't want to be condemned, uh, that it talks about. And we don't want to have to deal with that condemnation ourselves. For with what judgment ye shall judge, for what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. I wonder how comfortable, if we are, some, and I hope there's nobody here that way, uh, but if we're willing to judge people and point fingers at people and, and point out every little thing they do wrong, how would we like it if that happened to us? I mean, that's not what it says. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Yeah, how, how often would we like for everybody to tell us right back at us everything that we did wrong and everything that where we were coming short and falling short? Uh, we wouldn't like that condemnation, but yet, yet therefore, uh, too many times we're still willing to dish it out, so to speak. So we see the commonly used phrase, we see the condemnation, but I want you to look at the consideration that it talks about in verse number 3. It says, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? And that, that's going to be when we get to the message here in a little bit, part of the message. But how often do we consider ourselves before we begin to look at somebody else? How often do we consider ourselves and where we are at uh, before we go pointing fingers at other people, so to speak? And that's what, like I said, we'll get to that in the message. I'll skip over that one pretty quick. Here's uh, too many times we're willing to do that because of our confidence in verse number four. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. We're always quick to give advice. We're always quick to tell everybody else what they need to do. Well, if you would just do this, Brother Charlie, then this would happen, or this would be okay, or whatever it may be. We're, we seem to be very confident in times uh, today to be able to give advice and tell everybody how we think they should run their life, Brother Ron, or how we think they should do things, or how we think the things could, uh, the company could run better, or, or, or their life would run better, or whatever it may be. The problem is, is that it talks about we have that beam in our own eye and therefore we can't see clearly that it talks about there in verse number five. Thou hypocrite, first cast thy beam out of thine own eye and thou shalt see clearly to cast, thy, cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. With all that being said, I want to preach with this thought in mind tonight, a vision problem. Do we have a vision problem? This all came about, and this first point came about because when our, we was praying, uh, when our pastor was praying down at the rock altar that Sunday night, and he taught, after he just preached about being together, 
And I understand completely, and I appreciate the fact that you're here. Uh, I appreciate greatly the fact that we have such a wonderful crowd that will come out on Sunday nights, that will come out on Wednesday nights, and that people just want to worship, they want to see our church do something. But I still have to wonder if there aren't some of us that still have a little bit of a vision problem. See, he preached about being together on Sunday morning, and you still had that crowd that didn't come back on Sunday night. Why? Because we have a vision problem. See, the first thing where we have a vision problem is we, now the ladies, I was going to, you know, this has gone through my head. Ladies, wives, you don't have to listen to this because this has never happened. This is just for the men and the husbands in the room. We have a problem seeing where we're wrong. How many times do we have a problem seeing where we lack, where we are wrong in something that we do? Now, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number 6, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses, that's plural, are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. It's very easy for us to point at that crowd on Sunday night or on a Wednesday night of why they're not here and why, they don't, why they're not faithful or why they aren't this. So we seem to have a problem seeing where we may be wrong. Before we go to pointing at all them, is our prayer life where it's supposed to be, Brother Tommy? Is our study, is our reading of the Word of God where it's supposed to be? Is our attitude where it's supposed to be. See, there, it's very easy for us at times to look at anybody else around us and pick apart everything that they do in their life Amen. because then we don't have to look at ourselves. Right. Then we don't have to examine ourselves. We'll get to it a little bit later. We don't ever have to look and see, well, what is it that I'm doing? Where am I falling short? God, we've not had revival in this country for over 100 years. God, we've not seen revival break out. You know, I can remember back in the old building different times having two, three weeks going on for a couple weeks, a revival getting extended. And, and I don't remember how many, you know, I know our pastor could tell us that of over a certain two or three year stretch, how many, you know, whatever it was, 30, 40, 50 some weeks we were in meetings. I remember all that. Lord, is it me that's keeping all that from happening now? When was the last time we ever, have we ever asked that question? God, am I the reason our pastor talks about? You know, I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't remember services like that uh, growing up, but our pastor talks about, you know, being in services where somebody didn't get saved, where the right people get in the altar and asking, was it me? When was the last time we ever had that prayer? Amen. When was the last time we ever said, and instead of sitting worrying about, you know, this even come up, I was talking, I believe it was somebody at, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember now who it was talking to the other day, and we were uh, talking about preaching and different things, and sometimes yeah, it, maybe, maybe you've never had this happen to you. You might be righteous and, and be wonderful, but you're sitting in the service, and then preacher's preaching, and boy, man, I sure wish brother or sister so-and-so was here to hear this. That would really be good for them. And all the while, we're letting it go in one ear and out the other. Because we fail to see where we're wrong sometimes. We fail to see where maybe we fall short, and we get too much time looking at everybody else instead of truly looking inside. I think we have a vision problem. We fail to see where we're wrong. Those people don't want to come back on Sunday night or Wednesday night if they have the capabilities. They just fail to see why it's a problem. Why do we continue to live that close to the world and just expect God to bless the way we want him to bless? Why do we continue to live and do things the way we want to do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and just expect God to show up every Sunday or Wednesday? Why do we continue to, hey, we'll pray for revival next week when it's that important and instead of uh, you know, being in prayer from it from the time that it was announced and expect God just to show up and do something? See, we too many times we want to look at everybody else, everybody else I don't know what that was, and fail to see where we are wrong. Can I say this, number two? Not only do we have a vision problem in seeing where we're wrong, I'm afraid we also have a vision problem in seeing the work that's needed to be done. In Matthew chapter number 9, verse 37 through 38, it says, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We have a, don't misunderstand anything that's being said tonight. We have a great, great, great church that a lot of things get done. But don't be looking around what everybody else is doing. Are you doing what you can do? Are you doing what you're capable of doing? Amen. Whatever that may be. Whether it, may, it might just be you're the one that you, all you can do is just spend hours a day in prayer for our church. We need that. But are you doing that? Amen. See, sometimes we have a problem seeing what needs to be done. 
We, we think everything is just taken care of. I mean, we got uh, Brother Doug, he's, he's got uh, Brother Josh and Brother Adrian and Brother Ron doing things and got other preachers that can preach and, and they talk about the great crowd that they have go out on Monday night. So, hey, we're good, Brother Ron. We don't need anything else. Really? How many times in the last couple of years has our pastor mentioned, we used to have groups that went out two or three times a week. We had the Friday morning group, the Monday night group. I think sometimes they didn't have a Saturday group on Saturday mornings. I remember one time some of the ladies went out, would get together and go out. He's mentioned several times, if you can't go out on Monday nights, let us know and we'll find a time, find people to go out with you. What, what, why do, why are we only have one group that goes out? It, it's, it's a blessing. It is a tremendous blessing, the amount of people that show up. But are you doing what you can See, we fail to look at some times and see the work that needs to be done because we think everybody else has got to handle it. I'm good. Everybody else is taking care of this. We give out enough tracts and we give out this and we do that. So I'm just good going to church on Sundays and Wednesdays and show up and that's my part. Is it? Is it? Do we truly believe the Bible and truly believe how close we are to Jesus coming back and truly understand the amount of people out there that are lost? We talked about this on Sunday morning, this, and, and I told him, I said, I was in a great mood. We had a lady that comes to the jail. She is faithful. Anytime she gets the opportunity to come, she comes and, and, and got saved Sunday morning. I was in a great, wonderful mood leaving out of church. Amen. This lady got saved and, was, and, and come up there. And, and for whatever reason, when I left, most time when I go to the jail, if you're not familiar with the jail, you can go one of two directions. I can't tell you the names of the roads. It's just you can go left or right out of the jail, and that's all I know. The left takes you over and you go out there at Burlington at the stop and the right side you go out and you go past the fairgrounds. Well, when you're at the jail, you can see like a little sliver of the fairgrounds. You can see it over there. And you always know there's people over there. Well, whatever reason, Sunday, I pulled out and I went to the right. And I went out there onto whatever the road is and made a left and went down there past the fairgrounds. Do you realize how many people were at the fairgrounds shopping for antiques? It's their antique Sunday or whatever that they have once a month. So I used to always think, wow, there's a crowd of people over here. No, Brother Charlie, I'm talking it was like a fair crowd. I mean, you look on that side, uh, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with the fairgrounds where you just pull in on that left side, that whole side over there is full of cars. Do we think there's not work to be done? That's just in Florence. Do we not think there's work that still needs to be done? Do we truly think we're giving out all the, as I alluded to a while ago, there's plenty of addresses that don't get covered each and every month. Do we truly believe we're passing out all the tracks that we can? Do we truly believe that we're doing all that we can do? Because sometimes I think we have a failure to see the work that truly needs to be done. We have a failure to see of how much there is that we still can take part in, that we can still do. You know, there, there are so many things that could still be done that might even, you know, take a load off somebody else or free up somebody else to be able to do something. But we seem to be completely comfortable in what it is that we're doing. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, that's enough. I can't find that in the Bible where it tells me that whatever I'm doing is enough, Brother Josh. Now, if you're doing what God's called you to do, then that's wonderful. But how many of us are truly doing everything that we think, hey, I'm good, I do this, this, and this, and this, and I'm all right, I ain't got to do anything else. Really? We have a vision problem seeing the work that needs to be done. Can I say sometimes, and this is, you know, this hopefully might get you, I don't know, maybe a little more excited. We have a vision problem sometimes trying to see his wondrous works. You know, as I was preaching this, I don't, you know, I'm sure you, you may know this, and I think I can speak for Brother Phil and Brother Ron and any other preachers that are here. When, when God gives you something, you preach it to yourself a hundred times. And, and so I go through about five times a day on different illustrations that I can try to think of to use or different things to do. And, and I thought about right here, I thought about all of you take a phone out and open up your camera app and reverse that camera and look in that camera. You want to see one of God's wondrous works? Look in that camera if you don't think he's not done anything. Where would each and every one of us be if it not be for God? Where would we be this morning if it not be for God? We don't think he has the wondrous works that he has done. Look at what God has done in our lives and ask yourself, where would I be without Jesus? Amen. That's all the wondrous works we need. Right. That should be right there, should be enough to get us a, to, to, to get a shout for excitement and get us wanting to see God show up and do something and because to be able to show others what he can do in them because of what he's done in us. 
Look, I tell them at the jail all the time, and, and you know, I don't know how this would work. You know, we've we tried. Uh, whew, that was close. We we'd had somebody that was interested in going one time, and we had offered and you know tried to fill out paperwork and get him into jail. But I, I tell the ladies especially, I say, look, I, you know, I understand completely. I, I don't know anything about your life. Don't know how hard things have been. Don't know what you've been going through. I said, so I'm sure there's some of you here that I'm going to preach that's going to go in one ear and right out the other. I said, but if you'd allow God to do a work in your life, and you come, and then you can look at those ladies that are sitting here a year from now or whatever it may be, and you can say, this is how God's changed my life. This is how I know he can do it for you. Why do we not see? Look, I know that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, but God has still done a work in us. That here we are on a Wednesday night sitting in church. How many, I mean, be honest with yourself. In your flesh, how many other things could you still be doing tonight other than be at church? But because God's done a work in us, because we love the Lord, because we want to do anything to give back, here we are sitting in church. Why? Because of the wondrous works He's done. But sometimes we fail to see truly what God's done in our life. We fail to see how God can truly use us to affect others. We fail to see how, uh, you know, something that just completely by happenstance may, may put us in touch with somebody that could completely change or transform their lives because they came into touch with us. We have no idea. We have no clue how we could change somebody else's life. I was listening to something. This has nothing to do with the message, but this is what I thought of. I was listening to something today, and there was... Uh, Miss Caitlin would have appreciated this because she's into all that true crime stuff and all that kind of craziness, and some of that stuff freaks me out. But I was listening to one today, and there was a serial killer back in... I know this is going to be great, and this is going to go real well. Ain't it? He was back in the early 2000s, I think. He had gone across the country, and I believe he had killed 50-some people, Brother Josh. This lady had been arrested because they said that she had killed her 10-year-old son, Brother Ron, and she swore she didn't do it that somebody broke into her house and killed him and left him. And they didn't believe her. They said, nope, don't add up. Put her in jail, going to spend the rest of her life in jail. So she's about to spend the rest of her life in jail. There's a lady that heard that story, Brother Ray, and this lady just happened to be somebody that was wanting to write a book. And she was wanting to write a book on this serial killer. And she said something to him, Brother Brian, just about this case. Never told him any details, just about this lady. He wrote her back and said that it happened on this date. She's looking, yeah, it just happened to me on that date. So she goes, talks to him, comes out, he confesses to it. It was him. Just by happenstance, she just happened to know this guy and hear this story that then if it took a few years before they finally got everything taken care of and got this lady out, got her out of prison instead of spending the rest of her life in jail. I say that because all those things, we think that no matter what we may think about that, that didn't happen by accident. Even something like that, God has a plan. Nobody you meet throughout your day happens by accident. All you may just need to do is say, let me tell you what God's done for me. Let me tell you where I was at, and let me tell you what God's done in my life. Let me tell you how God's used me, or let me tell you how God's touched me, and you have no idea the difference you can make in somebody's life. You have no idea the friend that they may need that you could turn into, the confidant that they may need that you could turn into, all just showing the, the wondrous work that he has done in you. Not only do we have a vision problem in seeing his wondrous works, we also have a vision problem at times in seeing the wealth of blessings that we have. In Ezekiel chapter number 34 and verse 26, everybody knows this verse, And I will make them in places round about my hill a blessing, and I will cause a shower to come down. In his season there shall be showers of blessing. Well, we talked about a whole lot on Sunday morning about how good God's been to all of us. How good, and we can look around, and sometimes that we see, and we can take and have those services, and it just gets wonderful, and God shows up in a big way, and we get to thinking about all the blessings that we have, and everything God's done for us. And then we come in here on a Wednesday night. Really? Is it that bad? Do we really have it that bad? Like, do we really have it so bad that the rest of the week we just want to pout around like Eeyore, so to speak? Woe is me. Do you know, does God really love me? And, and, and have the pooch mouth all the time. Look at what God has done for us. Look at all the blessings that we have in this life. Look at everything that God's given us in this life. Look, there are people, you know, we, we have people that were born, you know, I was thinking about this, sitting in jail Sunday morning, and I almost brought it up, and I'm glad I did. Had two or three ladies sitting there that you could tell was from other countries. If they was in jail in some other country, who knows the conditions that they would be in? It's hard telling. What about us? 
We could have been born in some third world country. We could have been born somewhere else to be somewhere today where we don't have, we're not meeting in a building like this. We're meeting outside in the middle of a rain or outside and it's 100 degrees out and mosquitoes are eating us up. Instead, we're in here where it's air conditioned, got padded pews and all that kind of stuff. Amen. We've got it very, very good. Even no matter how bad our country is, we're still faring better than probably 95% of the world. But yet a lot of times we seem to walk around like we just ain't got anything and just our life's so terrible and everything's so bad and, and boy, I sure hope this, hope that. Really? Really? See, we have a vision problem. We fail to see truly how good God's been to us on a daily basis. He don't just bless us on Sunday or Wednesday. On a daily basis, the blessings that he gives us, everything that he blesses us with, you know, how many, you know, I've, I've used this talking about before, you know, how many times, how many of you, if you have to go to work early or something like that, how many of you get up three or four times in the middle of the night and just go outside and make sure your car starts? No, we don't do that. We get up, we walk outside the last minute, we can't get star fires up and goes. We better be thankful for that blessing because one of these times it might not start. And then we got to figure out what's going to do. All right, now I got to, you know, Brother Josh, all right, Brittany, I got to take your car and you're going to have to walk to work and, and, and somebody's got to come and drive you and, and, and everything gets thrown around. But because we fail to see truly how good God's been to us sometimes. Amen. Yes, sometimes life isn't fair. Sometimes life stinks. But in the grand scheme of things, we are still a blessed, blessed, blessed people. Sure. We have a problem seeing sometimes our wealth of blessings. Can we say these last two things? have to really to do not only us individually but us as a church we have a vision problem sometime in seeing his capabilities in ephesians chapter number three and verse number 20 we've all heard the verse now unto him that is able to do exceedingly but exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us you don't have to turn there if you don't want to but i'm gonna turn over to luke chapter number five i was listening to some preaching yesterday and they was preaching and talking out of this, and I was like, this will be good to use right here. Luke chapter number 5, we all know the, uh, the miracle here at the beginning, and we're going to start reading just down to verse number, uh, verse number 4 in Luke chapter number 5, and it says, Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, we have taken nothing, nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Can I say, we have a vision problem, I'm afraid, sometimes of seeing his capabilities. What do we truly believe God's capable of? Do we truly believe, and, and Pastor, I, I've, I've never gotten over this, that he mentioned it, it's been a few years now the first time he mentioned it. Why can't God give us from here to the end of the street? Why can't he? You're telling me God ain't big enough to do that? See, too many times we are just like, we get just like Simon. Master, we, we, Lord, we've, we've passed out thousands upon thousands of tracks. We, we have people that go out on Monday nights. We have people that come in. We've had people that left. Lord, we don't really, like, what are we going to do if we had all that? Well, let God worry about that when the time comes. And we're like Simon. We just want to make nevertheless... If Brother Doug wants us to pray for it, we'll pray about it. Really? That's a great attitude. I'm sure God's really going to bless that attitude. Yeah. Well, Pastor told us to pray. I guess we better pray that maybe that'll happen. That's a fine attitude to have. But yet God still blessed, you know, they still blessed them right here that they took in such a drought of fishes that their net break. We fail to see his true capability sometimes. We fail to truly realize how big of a God he really is. Why can't he give us from here to the end of the street? Why can't he give us a Christian school that we need in this area? Why can't he give us uh, a, a, a rescue mission or whatever it may be, whatever God wants to use it for? He can. We just fail to see that. I'm not, I, 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 don't, I don't want to put him on the spot, but Brother Clint, did you ever imagine when Pastor started over there that we'd be here? I mean, be, you know, you just, when you go through certain things, you just can't imagine. But I mean, I, I would think back, Brother Ray, we came here just a couple years later. Whoever dreamt that we would end up here and this be full needs something else because we fail to see his capability sometimes. We serve a big, big God yeah. that can do things that we can't even imagine. We have no idea what he could use this little church on the top of the hill for if we would just get on board. 
if we would just truly get on board and say, God, whatever it is you want to do with us, just allow us to be used for whatever it may be. Just allow us to be used in this community, in this county, across this state, Lord, that we become the church that just everybody says, wow, look what God's doing there. Look how God has blessed them. He's went from just this little building to now that, and now they're doing this, and God's giving them all this land and all these things. Look, I listen to a lot of different preaching. There's a lot of places uh, that you listen to, and the, and the pastors talk about how God just has slowly through time. If you don't think it can be done, I, I, you know, I, I, I hate to use... The, I'm, I'm just... God laid it on my heart, so I'm going to use it. It's been right about a year ago now that Sister Tina and Sister Pam went to California. And I told Tina, I said, if you're going to go out there, I want you to go to this church. I listen to their preaching all the time. North Valley Baptist Church. If you know anything about that church, it's a church out in California that uh, Pastor... Uh, I believe it's Jack Treber's been there for... Uh, I believe it's been pretty close to 50 years now. That started out, Brother Phil, as almost nothing. And God's just, he's just slowly, God's given them land. They've just begun to pray about land, Brother Jim, and said God sometimes would just come in, just give it to them. People would just come in, just give it to them. So they had meetings at times that they was going to go buy land, and the city council, nope, you can't do this, and you're not going to be able to do that, and people just come in and say, here, you can have it. Or they've just been able to come in and sell it to them for real cheap, or come and sell it to them for way less than what it is. And now, I don't know how many, you know, what they run, a couple thousand, I don't know, but it's a big old church, I do know that. Don't tell me God's not capable. If he can do it there, he can do it here. Amen. Right in the middle of Silicon Valley. If he can do it there, he can do it here. We fail to see his capability sometimes. We are the ones that limit God because we don't want to pray or we want to pray with that same kind of attitude. Nevertheless, if Brother Doug told us to pray about it. We'll pray about it. Well, great attitude. We have no idea what God can use us for if we would just say, just God uses. Not only just our church, even ourselves individually of what God could use us for. Amen. Let me say this for as far as this part, lastly. Pastor touched on this a little bit on Sunday night. We fail to see. We have a vision problem because we fail to see at times where we could end up. In 1 Samuel chapter number 4, verses 21 through 22, he alluded to these verses on Sunday night. And she, called the name, and she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. I'm afraid that whenever our pastor mentions this or even if I mention this or anybody else that may mention this, we don't truly believe it could happen. But he just alluded to it on Sunday night. Brother Jeffrey probably never thought it would happen in his dad's church either. But look at what that church is today. There are plenty of churches all across. I've seen all kinds of different things about the hundreds of churches that close the door each month. And I don't know, you see so many statistics. I have no idea what what's truly is true. But regardless, there's a bunch. There's hundreds that close their door every day or every month. I'm sure there's plenty of people in each and every one of them churches thought it would never happen to them. See, we fail to see sometimes that if, what's the Bible say? Where much is given, much is required. He's given us a whole lot. Are we giving back what we need to be? Or could we end up with that? Could we end up with that Ichabod stamped across the door? See, we fail to actually think about, no, we have such a great church. We do. But that don't mean everything couldn't change overnight. Or whatever. What, what, what did Brother Jeffrey preach on? All it takes a couple wolves to come in all of a sudden Amen. and you to have one of those down days that you're not seeing truly how blessed you are and you give ear to one of them and all of a sudden you're listening to the wolf and then you go with your buddy and get them to listen to the wolf and then there we go. We fail to see too many times where we may end up if we're not careful and we don't take, take advantage of what God's given us and we stop taking for granted the blessing that we have in our church and in our lives overall. How do we fix it? How do you fix a vision problem? Can I say that you do what this is? Side note, being that it came up in here, I wasn't going to say anything, but being that it's at the end of my message, I've been given the pointed finger, Brother Ron, just about ever since I got up here, from somebody. Somebody had a vision test today. So their eyes were dilated. And so Tina was telling her on the way home, you know, to close her eyes or because her glasses weren't changing and all that. So she thinks everybody should pray for her because she had a vision test today and her eyes were dilated. So everybody's singing over here and I keep getting this. 
Like, you'll be all right. But that's exactly what we need. We need a vision test. A vision test, what are you talking about? Psalm chapter 26 and verse number 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Ask ourselves, God, am I doing what I need to be doing? Am I thankful for the blessings you've given to me the way I should be thankful for them? Am I exactly where I need to be? We need to go through that vision test and examine ourselves. God, am I prepared for this revival that's coming up in 10 days? Or am I the reason why it might not be as good as it needs to be? God, have I prepared my mind and heart so far for that revival? Am I coming in this Sunday looking forward to hearing our pastor preach that revival break out and that just be that, you know, that in 10 days that that starts, we've already been in revival for a week. Why can't God break one out? He can. If we're willing to allow him to do it, he can. Maybe we need to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, Lord, what is it that, what is it that I need? Amen. Not only do we need a vision test, but we also need to get our vision fixed. How do we get our vision fixed? I think Psalms chapter 121, verse number 1 tells us that. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. Where is it that we're turning our eyes and we're turning our vision to more often? The world or the Lord? So you see a lot of nonsense. We, we all know what's coming up and however many days away it is. Let's see, today's the 23rd, so what's that? Probably 10, 12 days, 14, 13 days, whatever it may be the election is. Everybody's got their eyes on the election. Everybody's got their eyes focused on the election. Our pastors alluded to it many times. God's going to put into office who he wants in office. We need to keep our eyes on the Lord. But there are a group of people out there that if their person don't get it on either side, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? If their agenda or their whatever does or doesn't get passed or whatever it may be, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Let God worry about it. Just keep our eyes on Him. Just keep our eyes focused on Him. Let everything else fall where it may and realize, you know what? God's the one still in control. God's the one still on the throne and whatever's going to happen is going to happen and worry about the things that I can control, which is me. I can't control anything else. I can't decide who's going to get into office or who's not. I can't decide what goes on at my job and what doesn't go on at my job. All I can try to do is control me and be the best Christian and be the best representative of Christ that I can be and let everything else just fall where it may. Are we doing that? Or do we have our eyes on everything else? We have our eyes so worried about everything else. We're all worried about who's going to do this or who's going to do that and what's going on here and what's going on there instead of worrying about what's God wants. If we truly believe the Bible, we have to know things are wrapping up. We're getting very, we're getting closer each and every day to the end. How much more time do we have? We have, obviously, we know we have no idea. But it could be done any moment. Are we doing all we can for Him? Do we have our eyes fixed on Him? Do we have our eyes where it needs to be? Or do we have a really bad vision problem? That we're so looking at everything else going around and we just fit God in where it's convenient. It's convenient on Sunday morning, Sunday nights, and Wednesday nights because that's just always the way I do it. It's convenient to do that way. What happens if God wants to break revival out and go from November, whatever day that is, November the 4th, all the way up till Christmas? Ooh, careful, Brother Josh. Let's not talk like that. Let's not get crazy. Why not? Amen. Why not? Oh, I'm just too busy. I've just got too many things going on. There's no way I could handle that. Really? That's our attitude toward the things of God? We're too busy. We got too many. That, that put me too far behind. That would get me, I, I just, uh, I don't have time for that. So we're just going to fit God in where it's convenient. It's easy to have that week revival. Pastor told us about it. So we've already got everything planned. We're going to make sure everything's done around the house the week before, and we'll push it off to the week after. We're going to fit him in where it's convenient. See, I'm afraid we have a vision problem. We fail at times to see everything that God can do for us and everything God wants to do and how he could use us because we're so focused on the things that are all right here in this world around us Amen. instead of him. Let's get our focus off the things in the world and get our focus on him, and who knows what God may do for us. Brother Daniel, get you and Brother Clint come get his song, Verse of Invitation, ask us all stand. Maybe you just want to come, see what it is that uh, uh, God spoke into your heart tonight. But while they're picking out a song, let's pray. Our gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that uh, you give us a Bible that we can glean from, Lord. You've given us a Bible and you give us a, a message, Lord, that we can hopefully uh, uh, help us, Lord, to examine our hearts, examine where we are with you. Uh, Lord, and ask you to speak to hearts during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.